starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament, but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now. And I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic, we do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools. We know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. No spin, no bias, no censorship. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, critical race theory polluting the minds of our children. A shocking investigation into British schools finds pupils as young as five have been infected by the hard left American ideology that teaches kids to be ashamed of being white. I'll explain why this divisive and discriminatory claptrap must be booted out of our classrooms in my digest next and then my superstar panel weigh in. Tonight, I'm joined by Nana Queer, Calvin Robinson and Rebecca Reed. Also coming up 24 hours after giving Britain a license to drill, Rishi Sunak continues to put the brakes on net zero as he calls for common sense in climate policy. Of course I'm committed to net zero, but we've got to do that in a proportionate and pragmatic way that doesn't unnecessarily add burdens or costs to families' lives. But has the PM's defensive motorists come too late? Or could ditching the deranged march to net zero save the Tories from electoral oblivion? That's our big debate later in the show. Plus, Sunak comes out firing against the sinister rise of debanking. I think it's good that Nigel Farage and Coots are in dialogue resolving the issue there. But Nigel Farage also spoke, spoke about the broader issue of this impacting other people. And that's my primary concern. Reform UK leader Richard Tice wants the government to go further and is calling for new laws to ensure the scandal is never repeated. He's live in the studio later in the show. Elsewhere tonight, after being reportedly shunned by A-listers like the Beckhams, Oprah and George Clooney, are Harry and Meghan losing Hollywood lovey pals because their loose lips can't be trusted. Cara Kennedy and Joanna Jaju do battle in The Clash. Also on the way, is it right for Costa Coffee to face a Bud Light-style boycott after using an image of a trans man with breast surgery scars on a promotional truck? We'll get stuck into that in the media buzz. As always, uh, tomorrow's front pages, you know we're going to get them to you hot off the press and Tom Bauer he's uncancelled later in the show with more royal revelations you're not going to want to go anywhere this is Dan Wharton tonight let's go You're watching GB News, Britain's news channel, the shocking critical race theory infecting our schools and children as young as five years old. I'm going to reveal the specifics and you're not going to believe what your kids are being told by their teachers in just a few minutes. First, though, the news with Polly Middlehurst.
Dan, thank you. Good evening to you. Well, our top story tonight on GB News is that a Home Office official has told us the Bibby Stockholm barge will not be taking new arrivals tomorrow and, in fact, it could be next week before any migrants are allowed on board. An initial group of asylum seekers were expected to be sent to the accommodation, which is currently moored off Portland in Dorset today. The source also said the delay is because health and safety practices need to be signed off for port workers, adding there are no fire safety issues. In an exclusive interview today, the Prime Minister told GB News housing illegal migrants in hotels and flats was completely wrong and said alternatives like the Bibby Stockholm are being sought as interim measures. What's going on currently is completely wrong. We've got a situation which is unfair. British taxpayers are forking out six million quid a day to house illegal migrants in hotels and other accommodation. That's clearly wrong, it's clearly unfair, and that's why I want to put an end to it. Well, the Bibby Stockholm can accommodate 500 people, but new figures show that more than 3,000 people crossed the English Channel in 63 small boats last month alone. With an average of 52 migrants per boat, that's the highest number on record. More than 14,000 have made the dangerous crossing so far this year. Well, the Prime Minister was also introducing today what he called the biggest shake-up of alcohol taxes in a century. The move focuses on taxing drinks on their alcoholic strength, with duty on wine and vodka, for example, set to rise. Touring a beer festival in West London, Rishi Sunak claimed the overhaul made things simpler, fairer and would benefit thousands of businesses. But the British Beer and Pub Association warned it would cost the industry an extra £225 million in tax. MP Margaret Ferrier has been stripped of her seat after a recall petition which triggered a by-election. She was charged by police and suspended from the House of Commons for breaking COVID rules by travelling from Scotland to London after testing positive in September 2020. Nearly 12,000 of her constituents in Rutherglen and Hamilton West signed the petition. It'll be the first recall by-election in Scotland. House prices have fallen at their fastest annual rate for 14 years. The Nationwide says the average price dropped by 3.8% over the last 12 months. The average UK home now costing around £260,000. Now, batten down the hatches. The Met Office has issued yellow weather warnings for wind and thunderstorms covering large parts of central England and Wales for tomorrow. Strong winds could affect southern parts of England from 4am to 6pm on Wednesday, whilst thunderstorms could hit parts of England and Wales between 9am and 7pm. And staying focused on the skies, if you look west, you may be able to catch a glimpse of an August supermoon, as it's called, the moon looking bigger and brighter, simply because it's closest to us here on Earth. On TV, online, DAB Plus Radio and on the TuneIn app, this is GB News. Back now to Dan Wooden tonight. Critical race theory for children as young as five is infecting British schools in the face of staunch opposition from the Conservative government. That is the shock revelation today following an investigation by The Times into The Key, an organisation which provides resources to over 13,000 schools and educational trusts in the UK. And the hard-left American ideology that are teaching your kids will shock you. And how to talk to pupils about racism, no matter their age, teachers are directed to US statistics that claim white five-year-olds are, quote, strongly biased in favour of whiteness compared to their black and so-called Latinx contemporaries. Teachers are openly encouraged to talk about the 2020 American murder that led to the Black Lives Matter movement, with the document saying police brutalities and incidents like the death of George Floyd may not seem age-appropriate for primary school pupils, but children of all ages are likely to have heard about these issues in the news or discussed them at home. 
Teachers are ordered to, quote, not shy away from more difficult topics, even when it comes to working class or other underprivileged white pupils who deny they have so-called white privilege. So I couldn't believe this. Teachers are told that if a student becomes defensive because they say, you know, look, I'm gay or I'm poor or I'm a woman or maybe I'm all three, uh, they have to respond to say, that doesn't erase your white identity. Then there's critical race theory in history lessons. Teachers must avoid so-called white saviour narratives, including slavery lessons around white abolitionists such as William Wilberforce. Even music lessons must aim for 50% of the musicians or composers taught about to be non-white, even though that far outweighs the proportion of the British population. Whole school anti-racism audits and guides to decolonise lesson plans and even school trips are also included. The creep towards critical race theory comes against the express wishes of the Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch. We do not want to see teachers teaching their white pupils about white privilege and inherited yeah. racial guilt. And let me be clear, any school which teaches these elements of critical race theory as fact, or which promotes partisan political views such as defunding the police without offering a balanced treatment of opposing views, is breaking the law. But the Keys managing director, Michael McGarvey, stood behind the company's hard-left ideological teaching, insisting... Our job is to support schools with any challenges they face, including engaging with complex topics such as promoting equality and addressing racist or prejudiced attitudes. The key boasts of how it rejects a colorblind approach to life. But I believe that is actually encouraging division and discrimination and should be booted from British schools where, mark my words, it's class rather than race, that is usually the most important factor in determining one's educational disadvantages. But to respond now, my superstar panel. GB News Queen, Nana Aquair, the conservative commentator, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, and the best-selling author, Rebecca Reed. So, Calvin Robinson, for many years, you were an educationalist. Yep. Uh, do you agree with this critical race theory being promoted in tens of thousands of British schools? This is probably one of the most damage, damaging ideologies in schools right now. It is literally dividing kids into camps of white and non-white. It's not about equality at all, because they're not teaching a holistic curriculum. They don't want to teach more black history. What they want to do is teach less white history. The idea of removing positive figures, such as William Wilberforce, who helped end slavery around the world, to remove someone like that is saying we don't want to talk about the positives, we only want to talk about the negatives. Mm. It's promoting racial attitudes, it's not breaking them down at all. And that, you know why? It's big business. 13,000 schools charging 2.5k per school, that's 30 million turnover per year, they're, and they're, they're spreading hate, they're spreading toxicity and making a lot of money in return for it. It's absolutely abhorrent that this is in schools. Going against government guidance, DfE guidance, school guidance. I was a founding member of the Don't Divide Us campaign that put evidence out there to suggest this is not helpful to schools, not helpful to parents, not helpful to children. And we gave alternatives. If you want to teach black history, do it in a positive, holistic way where you can bring all kids on board. For example, teach that we're all British. Doesn't matter what skin colour you are, doesn't matter what religion you are, it's something that unites mm. us all. Instead of breaking us down to our immutable characteristics and saying, oh, it doesn't actually matter that you're you're a woman or gay or poor because you're white and you can never erase your white identity. That is not helpful. So do you think it does matter if you're a woman or you're, or you're gay or, it's, or you're poor? I, think, I don't think that any immutable characteristic should be our defining characteristic. But do you think they matter? All these things matter. So in Inclu your life including experience? Including your skin colour. All of these things okay. matter. So, so you're Rebecca, surely including your class? I would say class is the biggest term yeah, factor. I absolutely. couldn't agree with exactly. you more. But how because ridiculous, Rebecca. Because if you are a black Rebecca. boy who goes to Eton, exactly. you are obviously exactly. going to have... So how, like a white ridiculous, boy so how ridiculous, though, mm. that a five-year-old girl from a council estate with drug-addicted parents who, who says to her teacher, I don't feel advantaged, uh, is... is <laughs> 
is told. Uh, that doesn't erase, erase white your identity. despicable yeah. white identity. They don't say despicable, they say it doesn't erase your white identity. The, the common misconception is a bit it's a bit like male privilege. Or white privilege is the same thing. It doesn't mean your life has been easy because you're white or because you're a man. It means that your life has not been made harder by the fact that you of your skin colour or your sex. It true. is true. No, Nobody's true. life no, is no, harder because they're white. Whose life is harder because they're white? I'll tell you a few examples. I've taught in London schools where white British kids are in the minority and they've been bullied because of the colour of their skin and held back. Broad spectrum, their life will still be easier because they're white. No, their life is literally made more difficult because they're white. Over the course of their life, it will. Let Nana come in here. Nana, do you agree with Calvin or Rebecca? I have to go with Calvin. I think, Rebecca, the whole concept of the notion that because you're white, your privilege is way too simplistic. But that's not what I'm saying. No, but, but, but what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. And I think the narrative of this, again, is actually a re-indoctrination of a, a dominance of privilege. So when somebody, for example, says, I am white, so therefore I am privileged, it reinforces the narrative that that person is privileged. Mm -hmm. And whose interest is it, in, is it to hear that? Mm -hmm. It's not in the interest of the black person, it's in the interest of the person that's saying well, it. Well, isn't it racist in what itself? I, what I would, it's racist in itself. One thing I have heard people say, which I can understand, is that if you're in school and you're being told you are less privileged because you are not white, it is a demoralising thing to it hear. Is. And I think there's a, way that, there's a way to talk about it. And my issue with this is that it seems to been imported from America. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that American critical race theory mm -hmm. works here because we have a very different relationship yeah. with race. Slavery ended this a very totally different American. time away. I mean, why but, but are we that... teaching kids about George Floyd? But Seriously. I, he, he, Seriously. But, but I would, talk, I would talk to my American. daughter about Rosa Parks. I have the Rosa Parks. I have all of the books yeah. about inspirational people. And I will talk to her about that. And I do already talk to her about racism on some level. Do you, do you think George Floyd was an inspirational man? I will, I will talk about George Floyd and I will talk about police brutality, but I have a very healthy dis mm. distaste for the police. Yeah. More but he's no, they don't but he was no Rosa Parks, was no, he? No, they don't mention any of the bad things that he did. I mean, look, I know mm. he didn't deserve to be murdered. No, of course he, not. Nobody does. Of but, course but not. This is not somebody that you should hold up as a, some sort of icon who's this terrible thing happened to him. Yes, it happens to a lot yeah. of people of colour and a lot of people who are white, and it shouldn't happen. Mm. Police need to learn how to behave. But frankly, mm. th he is not the pin-up boy for this particular But when I talk about it with... When I have talked about things like that with my daughter, who is still very young. The point is, my, I'm making the point of the police cannot generally be trusted. Not but Rebecca, it's good to do. Whatever Rebecca, when did. I grew up and when I was at school, I was surrounded, uh, actually at a very diverse school, surrounded by the messages of Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lennon of a colourblind society. Now, mm. that is what I was taught mm. growing up, and I have taken that with me every single day of my life. I never judge someone because of the colour of their skin. I do live in a colourblind world, Me and I don't care that this organisation, The Key, says that that's wrong, because I think they are racist, well, I and think I think they very, are peddling propaganda. What is wrong with living in a colourblind world where you don't think about the colour of someone's skin, you think about their because characteristics? I think it's a very... Uh, so I used to say, oh, like, I don't really see colour, and then when my sister came back from university in California, she was like, that's actually a super racist thing to say. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're calling me racist and then when we talked about it further she was like it's not really for you to decide who sees color because of course well, in, the country, because in the world that i live in white is the neutral so she came back from america to tell you that that you listen i i think a colorblind world is the way to go so do i but it's not because, realistic no no, it, no no so you just said it's people not people do people, why, people but you've just said for it's not you, you for to you, decide and why, we've just said otherwise why is it not so who does decide telling me it's not it's not for me to decide if people see color or not right yeah, no, I'm... if we should live in a colourblind society. In a, in a perfect world, obviously, well, it would be why completely... Why can't we live towards a perfect we, we one make rather the than world. an imperfect one? Because... Why do we have to go to an imperfect one when you've just said it yourself? A perfect world, people don't see colour. Mm. Why don't we move towards that than an imperfect mm. one where you're forcing people to see it? I think it's an overly optimistic way of looking well, at the why, world, no, given well, I'd rather be how many people than, than are inherently and deeply racist and, and, and the institutionalised yeah. racism in this country. Oh, you know, Rebecca. That doesn't help. Rebecca, what is I mean, you, you, honestly, I'm going to set you some homework. You're going to go away tonight and you're going to read the Sewell report you're and you're going to realise that the UK is not an institutionalised racist country. There are institutions country. in the UK that have significant problems with racism, for instance. Totally different things. Totally different things. There, are people, there are people in institutions mm. who are racist. Yeah. And I think it's... No one's saying there's it's, not racism. It's, it's actually enabling these people who are racist to go under the umbrella yeah. of institutionalism. It's not me, Gov, it's the institution. Mm, exactly. No, it's you. Yeah. You're the racist. Yeah. You need to be held out. And if we okay. But if that, it's not this, then, then, if it's not critical race theory in schools, what do we do that improves the situation? Because I think we can all agree that racism is not an we ideal just, We situation. just teach people to work out what you're good at and yeah. focus on your... And, well, well, and do you know what and, I would say? Good at I would say go back and focus on the message of Martin Luther King Jr. Because you know what? 
there is more racism before, before, in society. So that, that's, a secondary that's, school sub, that's a secondary school subject. This is primary age kids. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine. In primary school, they don't even recognise colour. They literally yeah, are colour blind. That's not true. There are that, studies to that, show no, that if you offer little girls dolls, they will choose the white doll. There is a massive... It's a well-proven study. A white girl chooses the white doll and a black girl chooses the white doll. I will send you... I won't talk over you shouting, but if you put two young kids together, one's black and one's white, and they both have the same colour eyes, they will be like, oh, we're exactly the same. They, they will see the things that are similar with each other rather than things yeah. that divide. No, no, we teach them to divide you, you, you themselves. I'm talking about the study of so thousands of children. They might not even notice that the dollars are different colour. There might be another reason why they exactly. That. That's well, beauty standards. That's little girls absorbing beauty standards. An adult looks over it and makes that assumption as a problem here, and I think it's an adult narrative pushed on young children. We teach racism. We teach it. This is Nana Equia. Calvin Robinson and Rebecca Reed, my superstar panel, fired up tonight and with me for the next two hours. Don't go anywhere, but still to come, Lawrence Fox let loose in the woke karate hen house as he tears into a chef and apologised for having an all-white kitchen. Plus, he digests news. I'm very excited about this. That vegetarians are 50% more likely to snap a hip. Told you. But up next in The Clash, they reportedly fell out with the Beckhams over claims they leaked secrets to the press. So is top Daily Telegraph columnist Celia Walden right that Harry and Meghan are losing A-list friends because they simply can't be trusted? Royal scoop getter Cara Kennedy and social commentator Joanna Jaju lock horns on this. What do you think though? Dan at GBNews.com. Vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter back after this. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage. Here on GB News, we will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. Hi, I'm Dan Wooten. You can watch me live on GB News Monday to Thursday from 9pm. And did you know that you can also watch and listen live on our website, gbnews.com. You'll always be up to date on the latest breaking news, as well as enjoying the best stories, opinions and shows. You can even join the debate under our live player as you're watching. So head straight to gbnews.com on TV, radio and online. GB News, Britain's news channel. It's all about family, being in people's living rooms, all the interaction and getting to know who our viewers and listeners are. When I was young, my dad used to say, no, no, stop arguing. I wanted an outlet that would enable me to give my opinion. People are going through a really hard time right now, and I know that you don't feel like you're being listened to. 
by the establishment. I came to GB News because it's the people's channel and I want the audience to have their say on the events of the day. We're dynamic, we do something different. Democracy shows that the wisdom of the nation is in its people. I get to travel to find out what the story is from a personal perspective. The British people aren't fools, we know when we're not being told the full story. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. It's the best country in the world. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent your views. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Megastar US journalists Megyn Kelly and Lawrence Fox both on the way this hour. But time now for The Clash. And the Sussexes are losing friends faster than Harry's losing court battles at the moment after the Beckhams became the latest A-list couple to ditch the pair following high-profile snubs from Oprah, Taylor Swift and George Clooney. US producer Paula uh, Frolic suggested the couple's big Hollywood freeze-out could be a simple business decision. I was really interested by this. This woman knows the industry and she said... Everyone's got a movie to sell and a Broadway play they want to debut on screen in London or London's West End. And they know that Prince William and Kate, who are the biggest celebrity gets over there, won't show if they think someone is friends with Harry and Meghan. But top Daily Telegraph columnist Celia Warden puts the couple's plummeting popularity among Tinseltowners down to their blabber mouth, her words suggesting they've violated the Hollywood A-lister code and there's no turning back. So what do you think? Is Celia right? That Harry and Meghan are losing A-list friends because they can't be trusted. Dan at GBNews.com. Vote in our poll at GB News on Twitter. Those results shortly. But first to debate this now, I'm joined by Royal Scoop Getter at The Spectator, Cara Kennedy, and the social commentator, Joanna Ja Zhu. So look, Cara Kennedy, what's going on here? Because clearly... Harry and Meghan, who were once the toast of Tinseltown, don't seem to be getting these big invites and seem to be falling out with a lot of big names. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Celia's... Uh column in the Telegraph was definitely right about the kind of breakdown in relationship with uh, the Beckhams. And I think she's right when she says that um, the likelihood is that uh, the Beckhams have pushed away Meghan and Harry rather than the other way around. I mean, we know that uh, Brooklyn Beckham's wedding, the big kind of Hollywood uh, LA wedding, um, they weren't invited. And we know that William and Kate were. So people are starting to take sides now. And I mean, it's it's definitely far better to take the side of the future king than a couple that is associated with now leaks to the press, um, moaning and kind of this crusade to take down the, the monarchy. Joanna Jaju, that's what's going on here, isn't it? Harry and Meghan thought they would get everyone behind them, but actually American stars want the proximity to real royalty, and real royalty is now William and Kate, not the Sussexes. Look, I think um, with Meghan and Harry's situation and after Spare and after the documentary, it's something that's going to naturally divide a lot of people. You can't expect that, you know, you have something like that. You're not going to have one or two people fall out or maybe just in, in general, in friendships. People fall out all the time for various different reasons. It doesn't mean that Hollywood is ditching them. When you've got people like Oprah and Beyonce and Serena Williams and Tyler Perry in your corner, I would actually think that it's more realistic that a lot of these, you know, Hollywood um, A-listers who are probably quite fickle and probably quite, you know, care about their image and want mm. to be in the right circles would want to be at Oprah's dinner party next to Meghan, not, you know, going against basically the grain of how the majority of the biggest stars in Hollywood, including even massive legends like Elton John, are backing. Cara? I don't think that's true. And I think a lot of those people that you just named are kind of pushing back quite publicly um, against them, it, especially when the, the stuff that they said on Oprah doesn't match up with the stuff that they said a few months ago. For example, there was the big kind of... Uh, 
they walked back on the, the claims that the royal family were racist and then they said that they didn't say that they, they were racist and a lot of people then kind of publicly thought oh we need to kind of take a step back from this but I think the main thing is is that there is a lifespan to celebrity and when they first stepped down from the royal family in January 2020 they were the new big thing. They were the new celebrities of Hollywood. They moved to a very rich area with very rich people surrounding them. And it's only natural that three years on, um, the, the, the kind of celebrityness of them have wa- has waned. And also, Sorry, what, every time they try what? and keep themselves in the press, it doesn't do them any good. It, in fact, it just does them harm. Joanna? Sorry, I think it's quite disingenuous to say that they're trying to uh, keep themselves in the press. The press pretty much feed off Meghan and Harry. When Meghan literally disappeared and was just living her life for three months, it was, where's Meghan? Has she done this? Has she done that? The press go after Meghan and Harry. And I think that in this instance, like I said, maybe, you know, some friendships just naturally come to an end. People grow apart. But I don't think it's fair to necessarily say that, you know, um, friendships have fallen out. What proof do we actually have that friendships have fallen out? Because somebody didn't attend somebody else's wedding. And that's maybe even one friendship. It just seems a bit overboard, really, to be saying that everybody's taken a step back. I would actually like to hear from the other guests what proof we have that everybody has stepped back from Meghan and Harry. Clara? Well, there's there's tons of red carpet events and kind of big parties, big Hollywood parties that they have. And Cara, isn't it true, Cara, that Beyonce was particularly annoyed with the fact that Harry and Meghan included in their documentary uh, evidence of this text message that she had sent them, which made it look as if she was trying to pour rubbish on the royal family. And Beyonce wouldn't have wanted that text message broadcast to the world, would she? Well, of course, and 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 that's 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 the main part of it is that these celebrities above everything like privacy, and when you are having private correspondence shared to make yourself look better, then people are obviously going to take yeah. a step back. Yeah, and Joanna, what's with Joanna? What's with this idea of? being markled and that there was some sort of row between David Beckham and Prince Harry over who had leaked stories. I mean, you've got to admit that that doesn't put them in a good light. I think until I hear it from David Beckham's mouth and until I hear it from Beyonce's mouth, and let's just actually be real about Beyonce, she runs the tightest ship. And I know this as a Beehive member, okay? Nothing gets out of... um, If Beyonce's got a problem with someone, we're not going to hear about it. So to even say, oh, Beyonce was annoyed, it makes no sense. And actually, if Meghan is as, you know, cunning and actually is smart in terms of trying to, you know, align herself with powerful people, she probably asked Beyonce, is this okay for me to put you in this documentary? And Beyonce and Jay-Z have actually been very vocal in their support more than disdain. Previously. Quite proudly. Previously, yes, when they were in the royal family. But look, fascinating debate. Joanna Jaju, Cara Kennedy, thank you both so much. But who do you agree with here? Is Cillian Warden right that Harry and Meghan are losing A-list friends because they can't be trusted? Clay Hall writes, uh, this is via Twitter, no one wants to associate themselves with Harry and Meghan anymore. They are bad news and have been for a long time. Ali, on, also on Twitter, writes, who would want to be friends with a couple that air every grievance on whichever TV programme they're invited to do? They can't keep confidence. But Bollard uh, writes, Harry and Meghan are doing a great job and just want a quiet life. Wonderful people. Your verdict's now in. 80% of you agree that Harry and Meghan have broken the Hollywood code. 20% of you reckon they can be trusted. Top journalist Tom Bauer on standby, by the way, with his unrivaled analysis on the Sussexes. He's live later, and you know Tom always comes with a Bauer bombshell or two. First, though, the weather. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hi there, it's Aidan McGiven here with the GB News forecast. 
turning wet again overnight. Heavy showers replace the rain into Wednesday, but unseasonable winds, especially along southern coastal parts of England. An area of low pressure is developing over the Atlantic. That's going to move through central parts overnight. It's going to bring the strongest winds on the southern flank and some heavy rain ahead of it into Northern Ireland later this evening, passing through Wales, southern and central England, and then eventually northern and eastern England, seeing the wet weather by dawn, as well as southern Scotland. Now, northern Scotland stays clear overnight, and here temperatures will dip into the single figures, but elsewhere those temperatures will stay at 13, 14, 15 Celsius. But it is a wet and windy start to Wednesday. The wettest weather will be across Northern Ireland, central and southern Scotland, northern England. Another band of rain moves through southern counties for a while, carried through on a strengthening wind with the risk of gales for coastal areas, 50, perhaps 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That could cause impacts if you're uh, taking part in outdoor activities, for example, or camping. And another thing that could be impactful, very heavy showers and thunderstorms through central parts. That all clears through, and by Thursday, it's a much brighter start to the day. Some sunshine out there. Quite quickly, though, the cloud fills in and further showers develop by the afternoon. Hit and miss downpours, and the wind from the north will make it feel on the cold side. Similar conditions on Friday before another low arrives on Saturday. Looks like things are heating up. Boxed Boilers, proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Coming up, US media superstar Megyn Kelly bagged a big interview with White House hopeful Ron DeSantis. I'll bring you her biggest scoops, including Ron's attacks on Trump for not tackling the trans debate and a big promise to pardon the Donald if he does end up in jail. But first, the Fox report and a woke restaurant that apologised for its all-white kitchen team, brittle-boned vegetarians and the BBC News veteran who pushed climate fear porn from the sun-soaked patio of his French Riviera getaway. A climate hypocrite surely not Lawrence Fox here with all of that next the live desk with me Mark Longhurst and me Pip Thompson it's here Monday to Friday on GB News from midday we'll bring you the news as it breaks whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the live desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Weeknights on GB News from 6 p.m. You'll always get drama. Please stop, Michelle. I'm, I know, yeah. Please <laughs> stop. Should I just shut up? Romance. You like me, I like you. There you oh, go. There you are. Well, don't tell anybody. No. Adventure. Da 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 dum. Etc. Yeah, that's but, the whole point. But, 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 yeah. And action. Shut up. Greet my superstar panel. They're already at it. The fighting is going to be quite a show. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides have the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <laughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GV News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families we have arguments every now and then but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides 
the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back. We're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often, they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. US media superstar Megan Kelly coming up soon. But first, the Fox Report with Lawrence and restaurant tour and TikTok sensation Thomas Straker boasts almost 4 million social media followers, but has now fallen victim to diversity delirium. The public turned on him, or at least part of the public did, for unveiling a new team of white male chefs at Notting Hill Straker's eatery, blasting the lack of diversity in his brigade. Whiskey guru Becky Paskin, a regular face on ITV's Love Your Weekend, commented, it's been proven time and again that diverse teams are more creative, productive and successful. While a fuming female chef added, if you exclude women and people of colour from the get-go, you're not only part of the problem but an ongoing continuation of it. Straker originally hit back at his critics but has since caved in and apologised for the lack of diversity and promised to improve. Now... Lawrence, uh, we, we wouldn't see this sort of reaction, would we, if can't an Indian down. restaurant... Oh, no, you can't hear me. Lawrence, we'll get you sound. We'll get you can't sound. OK, we'll try and sort that out. But I was just saying, you wouldn't see that sort of reaction if you were posting a picture of an Indian restaurant, for example, with all of their chefs, who might happen to all be from India. And I personally found it really sad that in a situation like that... Oh, Lawrence, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Then, oh, yeah. good. Sorry, well, Lawrence, I, I... I was just saying, you wouldn't get the same reaction, would you, if, if there was an Indian restaurant that posted a picture of their group of chefs and they all happened to be Indian? I went into my local Jamaican jerk chicken shop today to complain about the lack of diversity in there. Today. How did and, that go um, down? I've always... Well, they just told me to bum the clock off. And then, um, you know, I went into the Indian and, yeah, again, there was a complete lack of diversity. Um, interestingly, if you look at the internet today, you'll see the main uh, identitarian nationalist party in South Africa calling to kill the white man. Um, this sort of thing about like obsessing over people's skin colour is really silly. It's like why do we can't change the colour of our skin? So what's the why is someone obsessed about it? You know, as the, the guy came out, Mr. Straker came out very wisely and just and just pointed out that you know there's a shortage of chefs. Um, you know, if you want a job, just apply. It's it, the obsession with skin colour and sexuality is just strange, very strange. But it, it leads is. to a very dark place. It is, and look. Worth I think sometimes it is just worth re reminding people we are a majority white country. There are going to be certain professions where you've got maybe majority white folk doing that job. Uh, now, look, Lawrence, I was so happy about this, so happy about this. Uh, a University of Leeds study revealing what I've known for a long time. Uh, men who follow a vegetarian diet are 50% more likely to break their hips than those who eat meat. So this was a study of more than 4,000 middle-aged participants, and it's the first time that the link between vegetarianism and frailty has been seen in men. It has been recognised in women uh, for some time, though. So, Lawrence, actually, I mean, are people starting to wake up to the fact... Uh, obviously, I know you're a man that puts your health first, uh, always. Uh, are people starting to wake up to some of the dangers of vegetarianism and veganism, finally? Well, I mean, who would have thought that eating rabbit food might make your bones less powerful. And the old adage that very vegetarians don't live longer, it just feels like they do, <laughs> comes into to play here. But the other, the other thing that we really need to do here is, is, is possibly just take a moment for Lewis Hamilton's dog, oh, his vegan dog. That's sick. Because I, that makes me mad. I don't... No, don't be a bigot, Dan. Don't. <laughs> Let's take time. Let's take some time. 
to think about the dog and his okay. plant-based diet. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So wrong. wrong. So wrong. So wrong. Uh, but, but look, I'm all for freedom of choice, right? I'm all for freedom of choice. But just stop pumping out this ideology out there that it's actually healthier not to eat meat. That's what angers me. Uh, now, Lawrence, I had to ask you about this. Uh, BBC long-term, you know, world affairs editor John Simpson has become the latest climate catastrophist to not fully get his own message. So did you see this, Lawrence? He posted a virtue signaling tweet about the world facing its hottest temperatures for 120,000 years, bashing the media outlets who weren't giving climate fair porn the attention he feels it deserves. Uh, and Lawrence, that was the very same week, just a couple of days later, actually, where he was boasting of his summer holiday being as good as it gets as he lounged in the Mediterranean heat with his family. So, Lawrence, is this proof that the metropolitan elite use climate change to virtue signal but expect the poorest to pick up the tab for nut zero? I think it's appalling how you're, you're, you're framing him because, at the end of the day, this is a man who has tweeted that the sun monster is going to kill us all. So surely that's enough. He's owed a holiday, isn't he? <laughs> He's tweeted it. He said it's the end of the world. <laughs> he needs a holiday. You know, it, the, the, we live in a world of feelings. And, and by you not acknowledging his feelings and him expressing that he feels there's a climate change and therefore he's not allowed a glass of Pinot Grigio in Italy, I think you're being a racist, homophobic bigot. <laughs> I'm sure I am. I'm sure I am. And I've got some more beautiful fair porn coming up from the Labour Party later in the media buzz, Lawrence, so, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Lawrence Fox, The Fox Report. Thank you very much, Lawrence. Uh, but also coming up in the media buzz, uh, Rishi Sunak puts the pedal down on his apparent drive to water down net zero by tackling dystopian low traffic neighbourhoods. He's already announced new North Sea oil licences, so is delaying the ban on diesel cars next. My superstar panel return to debate that shortly. But next, US media superstar Megyn Kelly delivers her bombshell interview with US presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis. We've got exclusive clips from the Florida governor's attacks on Donald Trump and his assessment of geriatric politicians like 80-year-old bumbler Joe Biden. Is Ron your man for the White House? Could he really beat Trump? Well, Meghan has spent two days with the guy in Florida. She's going to reveal all in mere minutes. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners on TV, radio and online. This is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my new show, The Real World, every Friday at 7 p.m., where real people get to meet those in power and hold them to account. Every week, we'll be hearing your views from up and down the country in the real world. Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11am on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Time now for US media megastar Megyn Kelly, who is fresh off the back of an exclusive sit down and lots of time actually with the man bidding to become the next US president. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, the self proclaimed woke slayer who stood up against COVID tyranny, was until recently Donald Trump's main rival for the 2024 Republican nomination. The Donald, still the overwhelming front runner for a second crack at the White House, despite news today that a federal grand jury is considering charging him over the January 6 riots. It comes as polling from the New York Times shows Trump crushing every other Republican candidate for the nomination and tied with Biden in the general election. So this is the moment DeSantis told Meghan that he would prove Trump's savior if he became president. Given your views on the weaponization of government, would you commit to pardoning him on any federal charges against him? Well, what I've said is very simple. Uh, I'm going to do what's right for the country. I don't think it would be good for the country to have an almost 80-year-old former president go to prison. Um, so that's a yes. It doesn't seem like it would be a good thing. And I look at, like, you know, Ford, uh, pardon Nixon, took, took some heat for it. But at the end of the day, it's like, do we want to move forward as a country? Or do we want to be mired in these past controversies? And I think the public wants a fresh start. Oh, Megan, it was a great interview. So many headlines. Uh, fascinated to know about the mindset of DeSantis. But what do you think the chances are of a President DeSantis pardoning a jailed Donald Trump, given where the polls are at? Uh, they may be getting a lot better in about um, 12 minutes because Donald Trump just posted on his social media I hear that deranged Jack Smith, that's the, the special yeah. counsel going after him, in order to interfere with the presidential election of 2024, will be putting out yet another fake indictment of your favorite president, wow. me, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That means in 12 minutes. The grand well, jury's been meeting. And this is over January 6th? Is that right? Yes. Yes. He literally okay. just posted it seconds ago. So this is breaking news that he believes the grand jury has indicted him over January 6th, something we weren't sure whether it would happen or not. He's posting that he's been given the heads up. It, it's, it happened and that it's going to come down any minute now. Now, Trump got everybody wound up about this about a week, 10 days ago, and it didn't happen. And what happened there was Jack Smith added other charges to the Mar-a-Lago documents case, saying Trump withheld improperly documents belonging to the people. Um, this is a, something entirely different. This is how he behaved on and around January 6th in contesting the election loss. And this is a much more dangerous case in some ways, Dan, if in fact so, Jack Smith so, is getting an indictment. So, so Megan, look, I, I know you, you know everything about the American judicial system. Uh, realistic possibility that he could be imprisoned before the election? On this case, yes. Yeah. The, wow. the, Here's the problem. They got the New York case against him involving improper record keeping of his hush payment to a porn star. That's not going anywhere, but it's going to be in front of a jury that hates him. But even if he's convicted, it, it, he's, there's not going to be jail time. All right. So that's kind of a nothing, um, you know, relatively speaking. Then comes the Mar-a-Lago documents case saying you took classified and other documents with you that you weren't entitled to, and then you lied about them, and then you didn't produce them when a subpoena was handed to you. And so one thing on top of the other, 39, almost 40 charges now, because uh, they had just revised it. He's in real trouble in that case, but he's going to be in front of a jury that should be Trump-friendly. 
down in Florida. And I don't think that case is going to trial before the November election. They said it for May. I just don't think it's going to go off in May. It's very easy to get these things delayed. I predict that one goes down after the election, and he's got a good shot given the jury pool. However, the two ones that are outstanding, Dan, are January 6th, yeah. which would be char tried in front of a D.C. jury and potentially charges in Georgia, which would be state charges that he could not be pardoned on, which would be char tried in Georgia. Um, and both of those could be on what we call rocket dockets, dockets that are going to go fast. The, the neither the judge nor the prosecutor in either one of those cases will be prone to delay. And both could potentially, if they get charged ASAP, could get tried before the election and both could require serious jail time. OK, uh, personally, I think that's crazy. But but putting that crazy. to one side, it doesn't preclude him for running from running, no. does it, Megan? I, I mean, no. if you look at the polls, is there not an argument to say, actually, the Republicans are even more likely to get behind him? I mean, are we seriously facing the possibility of Trump being the nominee and running from behind bars? There will be such a backlash against this system and Jack Smith, if that happens, and Joe Biden's Justice Department, which is doing this to him. If they take the man who's leading the Republican contest for its nominee by 40 points and put him in jail over what? Over comments that people should march peacefully to the Capitol on January 6th. I realize people are mad about January 6th. People are being held criminally responsible right now. But Trump is not criminally responsible for January 6th. The people who hurt police officers, who defaced the Capitol, different story, and they're being held accountable. What happened down in Georgia, you know, saying, I need to find 11,000 votes, that's not enough. This is absurd what's happening to him, Dan. It's absurd. The Mar a Lago documents case is the best case against him legally, but it's almost the mirror image of what Hillary Clinton did, including <laughs> defying yeah. a subpoena if they yeah. can prove it, and she wasn't charged. No, of course so not. So how does he get charged? There well, are we know two why. standards of justice, and the American people know it. And this is the problem for the Republicans right now, mm. because he's leading by 40 points. They want Trump. They like DeSantis. The New York Times poll con yeah, concluded yeah, yeah. this week. They like DeSantis, but they love Trump. And they're, the one they love it could very well be in prison soon, and that is one of the reasons why the one they like, DeSantis, continues plodding along, despite the fact that the polls are not in his favor right now. Well, yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Megan, because, of course, you've been wanting this interview for a long time. For a long time, he didn't want to sit down with you. When he did, it sounds like DeSantis gave you loads of time, both on camera and off camera, on a real charm offensive. So what's his strategy? Is his strategy to literally see the Trump campaign implode and hope at that point uh, Republican voters give him a second chance? So he won't say that on camera, but it has to be. It has to be. Why he's kept himself behind closed doors and in conservative safe space media is beyond me. He gave a very nice interview. You know, mm -hmm. as you saw, I asked him very challenging questions throughout and pressed him. You we did. went deep, deep, deeper. And he handled it with ease. You know, maybe you could have done better a couple things here or there if you really wanted to nitpick the guy. Uh, but I thought I, I would give him an A on how he handled that interview. So why? Why have they been keeping him wrapped up? There's no point to it, especially with somebody like me who is not out to kill him, right? I'm not going to ask him unfair questions. It makes no sense to me. I think he just got on this sort of belief that conservatives hate the media and anybody who's not declared themselves pro DeSantis is not to be trusted. Well, I'm I'm not pro or anti DeSantis. I'm not pro or anti Trump either for the record. I I am having some real problems with the sitting president of the United States and I'll be honest about that. It would it would be hard for me not to spend an entire interview with Joe Biden beating up on him over the many things he's done. However, on the GOP side, obviously, it was very fair, and he handled it just fine. Um, so I really hope this is the beginning of a new strategy for him in, in making himself more visible. What's your plan to protect women and girls 
from men who claim they are trans trying to get into our spaces and our sports. Well, in Florida, we've, we've done all of that. Uh, we will look within the constitutional authority of the federal government, we'll look to do the same for women's sports um, and those issues nationally. Do you think that Trump is soft on this issue, the issue of trans rights versus women's rights? He had been a pioneer in injecting men into women's competitions because you know he was doing that with beauty pageants way way back in the day you know 10, 10 years ago or whatnot and then he's also opposed things like protecting locker rooms and bathrooms when he was running he said North Carolina shouldn't have done that when they did it the temperatures rising boxed solar proud sponsors of weather on GB News Hi there, it's Aidan McGiven here with the GB News forecast. Turning wet again overnight. Heavy showers replace the rain into Wednesday, but unseasonable winds, especially along southern coastal parts of England. An area of low pressure is developing over the Atlantic. That's going to move through central parts overnight. It's going to bring the strongest winds on the southern flank and some heavy rain ahead of it into Northern Ireland later this evening, passing through Wales, southern and central England, and then eventually northern and eastern England, seeing the wet weather by dawn, as well as southern Scotland. Now, northern Scotland stays clear overnight and here temperatures will dip into the single figures, but elsewhere those temperatures will stay at 13, 14, 15 Celsius. But it is a wet and windy start to Wednesday. The wettest weather will be across Northern Ireland, central and southern Scotland, northern England. Another band of rain moves through southern counties for a while, carried through on a strengthening wind with the risk of gales for coastal areas, 50, perhaps 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That could cause impacts if you're uh, taking part in outdoor activities, for example, or camping. And another thing that could be impactful, very heavy showers and thunderstorms through central parts. That all clears through, and by Thursday, it's a much brighter start to the day. Some sunshine out there. Quite quickly, though, the cloud fills in and further showers develop by the afternoon. Hit and miss downpours, and the wind from the north will make it feel on the cold side. Similar conditions on Friday before another low arrives on Saturday. The temperatures rising. Boxed solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. What you get for breakfast is something that, if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. From 6, it's Breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the people's channel. Britain is watching. People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10am till noon on GB News. Britain's news channel. It's 10 p.m. I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, Rishi Sunak gets into gear, reversing net zero. 24 hours after approving new North Sea oil licenses, the PM pledges allegiance to motorists and vows a crackdown on dystopian low traffic neighborhoods. He's now under pressure to delay the ban of petrol and diesel cars. 
course aren't committed to net zero, but we've got to do that in a proportionate and pragmatic way that doesn't unnecessarily add burdens or costs to families' lives. So why has it taken Sunak so long to pull the handbrake on net zero and should he go further? That's the big debate next with my superstar panel. And tonight I'm joined by Nana Aquare, Calvin Robinson and Rebecca Reed. Farage opened the floodgates, but now more high profile names have shared their debanking woes. Reform UK leader Richard Tice is one of them, and he's now calling for new laws that ensure the scandal will never be repeated. The Brexit architect live shortly. And after the Beckhams were markled by the Sussexes, reports suggest Harry and Meghan have broken the so-called Hollywood code because of their gossiping ways. Top royal author Tom Bauer investigates whether the couple are now a spent force stateside. Meanwhile, is this picture of a trans man on the side of a coffee van with their mastectomy scars on show going to prove Costa Coffee's Bud Light moment? Furious customers think so, but are they overreacting? We'll debate in the media buzz. Find out what Brexit voters have done to deserve a nomination when I crown tonight's greatest Britain and Union Jack Cass too. We're going to have tomorrow's newspaper front pages for you hot off the press as well. And the latest on this breaking news. Is Donald Trump going to be indicted for January the 6th in just a few moments? A situation that could see him running for president behind bars. With the latest on that, here's Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you. Good evening to you. Yes, let's bring you that breaking news we've received within the last 15 minutes or so uh, from the United States that the former president, Donald Trump, is saying online that he expects to be indicted again tonight. Uh, we're hearing that it's in about 10 minutes' time, so not confirmed yet, but speaking on Truth Social, that's his own social media platform, he says special counsel Jack Smith will be putting out what he calls another fake indictment of your favourite president. Jack Smith was appointed oversee investigations into Donald Trump and a grand jury has been looking at efforts to overturn the 2020 election result. That's what it's all about. He's questioning the timing of this. Donald Trump is questioning the timing, calling it pros pros prosecutorial... Is that how you say it? Sorry, I'm, I haven't uh, rehearsed that word. Misconduct. Mr Trump is currently the front-runner for the Republican nomination. You may know he's already 40 points ahead in the polls. And he's already facing 40 federal charges relating to his handling of sensitive government documents. The indictment is likely to be confirmed, as I say, within about 10 minutes' time. We'll bring you more on that just as soon as we get it. Now, news here at home. The Home Office has told GB News tonight that the Bibby Stockholm barge will not be taking new arrivals tomorrow and it could be next week before any migrants are allowed to move in. An initial group of asylum seekers were expected to be sent to the accommodation in Portland, in Dorset, today. The source also says the delay is because of health and safety practices which need to be signed off for port workers, adding there are no fire safety issues. In an interview today with GB News, the Prime Minister said housing illegal migrants in hotels and flats was completely wrong and said alternatives like the Bibby Stock Home were being sought as interim measures. What's going on currently is completely wrong. We've got a situation which is unfair. British taxpayers are forking out six million quid a day to house illegal migrants in hotels and other accommodation. That's clearly wrong. It's clearly unfair. And that's why I want to put an end to it. Well, the Bibby Stockholm can accommodate 500 people, but new figures show that more than 3,000 people crossed the English Channel in 63 small boats in July alone, with an average of 52 migrants per boat. That's the highest number on record. More than 14,000 have made the dangerous crossing so far this year. Well, the Prime Minister was busy today. He also introduced what he's calling the biggest shake-up of alcohol taxes in a century. The move focuses on taxing drinks on the alcoholic strength, with duty on wine and vodka, for example, to rise. Touring a beer festival in West London today, Rishi Sunak claimed the overhaul made things simpler and fairer and would benefit thousands of businesses. But the British Beer and Pub Association warns it'll cost the industry an extra £225 million a year in tax. 
The MP, Margaret Ferriot, has been stripped of her seat after a recall petition triggering a by-election. She was charged by police and suspended from the House of Commons for breaking Covid rules back in lockdown by travelling from London to Scotland after testing positive in September 2020. Nearly 12,000 constituents in Rother Glen and Hamilton West signed that petition. Mrs Ferrier says she won't be standing in the by-election, the first of its kind in Scotland. Now, you may have seen on our weather forecast, the Met Office has issued yellow weather warnings for wind and thunderstorms covering large parts of central England and Wales for tomorrow. Strong winds could affect southern parts of England from 4am to 6pm in the evening on Wednesday, with thunderstorms hitting parts of England and Wales between 9am, 7pm. That's it, you with GB News. We're across the UK on TV, in your car, on digital radio and on your smart speaker by saying play GB News. Back now to Dan. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media buzz. First front pages are in, hot off the press. Obviously, these are the first editions, so nothing yet on that breaking news of the Trump indictment. Uh, perhaps they'll be changing up, but for the moment, the Independent leads with the pleas of an Afghan pilot's wife who is urging the British government to help her family come to the UK. Cancer Holy Grail, that's the headline in the Metro, which leads with a new pill that can kill cancerous tumours but leave healthy cells untouched. A molecule in the pill has been named in honour of the nine-year-old Olivia Healy, who died of the disease. Goodness me, that's great news, isn't it? Superstar panel, back with me now, GB News Queen, Nana Aquir, the Conservative commentator, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, and the author and broadcaster, Rebecca Reed. Now, he announced more than 100 new North Sea oil licences yesterday, but now Rishi Sunak has bolstered his anti-net zero credentials once more by pledging a crackdown on dystopian low-traffic neighbourhoods. The PM has warned ambulance response times must have priority over wacky green schemes like LTNs, which are intended to drive down traffic. And in a bid to let motorists know he's on their side, Sunak pointed to the scrapping of LTNs in Wandsworth, South London, as he ordered a more widespread review that could see them consigned to the dustbin of history. Now, we know Rishi usually loves to stick to the script, so will he follow through with this common-sense climate rhetoric and delay the ban on petrol and diesel cars until 2035 at least, just like the EU? Well, our very own Liam Halligan asked him that in our exclusive interview today. Watch. No, that's been the government's policy for a long period of time. It remains a government's policy. But my overall approach to all these questions is, of course, I'm committed to net zero, but we've got to do that in a proportionate and pragmatic way that doesn't unnecessarily add burdens or costs to families' lives. And I think we saw a good example of the wrong approach recently, when in Uxbridge by-election, you've got the Labour Party, Keir Starmer and Sadiq Khan, pushing ahead with ULEZ. What does that do? Just puts £12.50 on an ordinary family's bill. Now, Calvin Robinson, it's all well and good uh, hearing this rhetoric. And don't get me wrong, I like what he's saying. Mm. But at the end of the day, he's not saying that he's going to move the deadline. It doesn't really matter what he says because it's just words. It is just rhetoric. Mm. We need to see some actions. He's very good at speaking. He talks all the time, but he very rarely follows through. If he was on the side of motorists, he'd be clamping down on not just LTNs, but ULEZ and all of this anti-motorist propaganda policies we have popping up all over the country. And actually... I don't, don't even think it's his fault. I think it's our fault. We keep voting for these people. We, we keep electing these people that are tearing down our cities and enforcing these 15-minute cities upon us. You know, if they really wanted us to live more locally and, and, and more environmentally friendly, they'd, they'd make sure that we had butchers, uh, we'd have grocers, we'd have all the things we need to live within a 15-minute city, rather than just say, here's a camera. If you leave this area, you'll get charged a fee. You'll get charged a fine. It's, it's back to front. It is it's dystopian. Totally but, but, Nana, you do think this is Rishi's best hope, right? This is his potential path to an election victory if he truly turns his back on this eco-extremism. Yeah, I, I think it's literally their only hope. If he does that, or, or obviously, if he stops the boats, that would be amazing. Mm. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for that one. Mm. 
Uh, but this is pretty much the last chance saloon for the Tory party. He needs to stop just talking and actually doing something about but it. But it's a dividing line It is with a dividing Labour. line because Angela Rayner had said mm. that the plan is that these ULEs... All over the, all over the country. All over the country and nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. So all he has to do, all mm. Richard Sunak has to do, is listen to what the people want and actually act on it. But why aren't they... What I don't understand, why are the Tories not being more aggressive, like Labour is being aggressive, with their media campaign? They should be planning mastering that Rainer interview mm. on Sly News across every media platform but, but, via advertising at the moment because mm. it's hiding in plain sight what Labour intend to do. Yep. You know, Starmer has this very moderate mm. approach, but that isn't actually what he's going to do in power. Rayner reveals the truth of their plotting and their plans, and it's Miliband's vision, which is a hard left, hard eco-extreme Green New Deal future was going to make all of us poor. But would the established media even put this out there? I mean, you saw with Partygate and Beergate, you had Partygate, Partygate, but Beergate literally went under nothing, the radar. Nothing. So I even think that they wouldn't emphasise or highlight that at all. I mean, of course, these LTNs were set up during COVID, a lot mm. of them, when we weren't asked yeah. about it, so they just popped them in there. And they're obviously... Well, even Rebecca hates them. They also, they falsify... Even them. Rebecca, they, they, on the left, they you falsify... hate these things. I hate these things because when my daughter was nine days old, she stopped breathing and I called an ambulance and when they eventually got there and I had done mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation being guided by uh, somebody on the phone, the people who took... The ambulance guys who took her said these low-traffic neighbourhoods triple the time that it takes yes. to get here. Despicable. And that is, that is, like, unbelievable. And also, the other thing is, and a much, much, much less important thing, I lived in one, which meant that if I want, if I was coming home alone late at night, I had to drive, like, yeah. this extra, like, nine minutes round mm. to not walk down a street alone yep. as a woman, usually fairly scantily clad and usually drunk, realistically. So I'm very anti them for those reasons. But, Dan, it's so um, frustrating. I lived in Oxford and we campaigned. We said, mm. look, if you vote for these parties, they're going to install these LTNs, they're going to install these 50-minute cities, and people still voted for them anyway. Well, the thing so we get, we get what we deserve. But the issue is this is one of the few times where the Tory party have the usual problem Labour have, which is that it's a divisive issue within the kind of person who usually votes for them. Because there are large swathes of people who are Tories who are very green-minded. Boris Johnson is quite naturally green. Prince Charles. Yeah. Uh, we had his dad, up. Stanley, on the <laughs> Superstar <laughs> panel yeah. last night. There Believe is, me, they're green. There is not mm. a real so, Boris Johnson, he's a Liberal, he's not even a real but it's, th These Greens, but it's you have to follow the money, don't you? Mm. Well, and, and basically, I think it's that if they felt like they came out and they said, ah, net zero, net, net nothing, 20 70s too soon, then there is a large way of the people who would not vote for them. Therefore, they can't be as emphatic as I think they might like yeah. to be. I'm with Nana on this. After immigration, scrapping net zero is the biggest yeah, winner. Absolutely. Get rid of it. Get rid and of they it. should just do it. Follow what Lord Frost said. That's Follow right. what Pretty Patel said. Listen to the true small okay, C Conservatives and the not, Conservative in Party. In fairness, it shouldn't just be about trying to win the election. It should also be about being trying to do the right thing. And in a, it would be really so nice true. for us to do less. Like, well, air well, pollution look, in London Rebecca, I want to show you Labour's position. I want to show you Labour's position because it's very, very confused. Right. So, uh, given the Labour Party has been accepting donations from Just Stop Oil back at Dale oh, Vince, uh, you've got the Labour MP Thangam Debonair, you know, one of their senior front benches, spouting the eco terrorist line on the BBC, but actually fell to a BBC presenter to highlight the inconsistencies in Labour's climate agenda. Watch this. If Labour were to win the election, will you revoke the licences? Well, we will grant no new licences. It's not OK. The world is on okay. fire. We right. have all seen that this week. And Rishi Sunak is taking us backwards. You will not revoke these licences. And so, therefore, that production in the North Sea will go ahead for both air, gas and oil to the same extent that the Conservative government wants it to go ahead. So, in a, in a sense, you are pursuing exactly the same strategy. So not only is she spouting irresponsible rhetoric about the world being on fire, her policy approach makes clear she knows that rhetoric is completely untrue, But didn't Rebecca. the BBC do a good job of balanced reporting there? Well, we, we, just then, she tackled... It. We always talk about how the BBC never tackles anybody. They absolutely did in that example. It's nice to see, isn't it? Oh. Lovely BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I, so. I mean, you heard the way they covered the whole climate with literally... The, the yeah. whole thing was on fire, yeah. all the... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, the I'm sorry. The... If Kirsty Walt was doing a proper job there, she would have said, David F, hold up for one moment. Where is your evidence that the world is on fire? Mm. That is well, she had, highly I don't think, I don't irresponsible had rhetoric is... that you are putting out into the world. Your policy positions does not back up that rhetoric. And, look, I think Labour's in trouble on this, and I think Nana's right, mm. uh, but there's got to be more than rhetoric.
Got to be more yes. than restaurants. Yes. Yes. And, and is Sunak really brave enough to do that? Mm. Rebecca Reed, Calvin Robinson, Nana Aquir, do stand by because coming up in the next Media Buzz, coffee giant Costa Coffee are in a whole latte trouble with customers after displaying a trans man with their surgically removed breasts on the side of a drinks van. Is this their Bud Light moment? But next, Reform UK leader Richard Tice has his sights set on new laws banning authoritarian banks from cancelling customers for Ron Think. He joins me live in the studio to let rip and reveal his own debanking howl. The Live Desk with me, Mark Longhurst. And me, Pip Thompson. It's here Monday to Friday on GB News. From midday, we'll bring you the news as it breaks, whenever it's happening and wherever it's happening, from across the UK and around the world. Refreshing, feisty, but with a bit of fun too. If it matters to you, we'll have it covered on TV, radio and online. Join the Live Desk on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Weeknights on GB News from 6 p.m. You'll always get drama. Please stop, Michelle. I'm, I know, yeah. Please <laughs> stop. Should I just shut up? Romance. You like me, I like you. There you oh, go. There you are. Well, don't tell anybody. Don't. Adventure. Da 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 dum. Etc. Yeah, that's the whole point. But, 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 yeah. And action. Sergeant shut up. Read my superstar panel. They're already at it. The fighting is going to be quite a show. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. So Jubes and Co, we tackle the issues of the day with real robust debate. Both sides have the fence, battling it out with me in the middle with my forthright opinions and views. And often really interesting things happen because you start with a position and then by the end of the debate, you find actually, well, I might not have thought about that one. What we need in this country is two new political parties. You should maybe think about doing a 2024 calendar. <coughs> I'm Michelle Jubry and I'm keeping you company right through until seven o'clock this evening. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's watching. Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prison? I, I don't believe in prison. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <gasps> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. In a world of dull and predictable radio and TV shows. Oh, hi. On Mark Dolan and tonight, we've got big guests. We drill into the big stories of the day. <laughs> the show adds up to a brilliant listening and viewing experience. Mark Dolan tonight is the most entertaining current affairs show ever. And that's a fact. That's Mark Dolan tonight, Friday, Saturday and Sunday from 9. Only on GB News. Britain's news channel like all families we have arguments every now and then but actually we agree on what the mission of GB News is and that's the most fundamentally important thing. GB News provides the kind of platform that lets all voices be heard. We don't hold back, we're free to say what we really think. Just because some people who live in a tiny little Westminster bubble think that their particular story is important, that's not the most important story for me. And often they will be difficult stories, stories that you won't find on the establishment media. Because what people think in the north of England may be very different to what they're thinking in the home counties. We're going to carry on telling the world what life is really like for households up and down the UK. We love to be in your car, in your kitchen as you're having your breakfast, Whatever you're doing, you are part of the show. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News, the people's channel. Britain's news channel. One of Britain's best journalists, Tom Bauer, on the way to discuss the Sussexes and much more. But first, Nigel Farage's banking scandal has exposed scores of other high-profile names who have been debanked for thought crimes, including one of the chief architects of Brexit, Richard Tice. Now leader of Reform UK, which is surging in the polls, by the way, Richard has called for a legal right to own bank accounts after numerous financial institutions pulled the plug on his personal and business ventures over the past year. This was the moment today, and this was a big moment, 
Rishi Sunak told GB News' Liam Halligan that he supported Nigel Farage's crusade against the banks. And Richard, could you believe, even just a few weeks ago, completely unthinkable that the Prime Minister, you know, a member of the Conservative Party that for so long, you know, has had this hatred towards Farage, no. UKIP, Brexit, Me. you... He actually, Sunak was there saying to Liam Halligan, it's right what Farage has done, it's right that he has capitulated, that Coots have capitulated, and it's right that there's going to be a discussion about what's happening with other customers. It was a phenomenal moment. It was a moment, but I think actually the reason is because everybody's now woken up to the fact mm -hmm. there aren't thousands, there aren't tens of thousands, I think there are hundreds of thousands of people who've had their bank accounts closed and cancelled. We've no idea how many small businesses have gone to the wall because of this. But also, you've got cabinet members like Grant Schatz mm -hmm. now admitting that not only he, but his family members. And I've got uh, something, information's come to me just this evening that actually someone that I know, uh, who is essentially a relative of someone who's a politically exposed person, um, has been described as, as the, they're at risk and therefore their file has been moved to the mo anti-money laundering officer for review and reflection. And you think, hang on, what is going on here? It's a full-throttled full throttled attack on democracy. Have a little watch of, of what Sunak said and we'll get you to respond more off the back. I think it's good that Nigel Farage and Coots are in dialogue resolving the issue there. But Nigel Farage also spoke, spoke about the broader issue of this impacting other people. And that's my primary concern, because ultimately this isn't about any one individual, this is about values. Values that are important to me and important to our country. You've got values. In how no, hang on, this is really important rather than the individuals to focus on the values that are at stake. Values of freedom of expression and privacy. I believe in those values very strongly. People need to be able to have lawfully held views that we might not agree with, but they shouldn't be denied financial services because of them. But what's he going to do about it? We always hear warm, waffly words from Conservative Prime Ministers and Cabinet members. I want action. So what, and I what want would it you do now? What, what he do? should do now is he should immediately suspend all of the PEP regulations. Mm -hmm. That deals with it. But look, they're not in the House of Commons. They're not sitting there in recess. Just have an immediate suspension on all of this stuff until they get back and pass some laws what about to cancel folk? Because it's... How do you guarantee, though, that ordinary folk have a... So, right so there's two to aspects to it. Account. One, you suspend all the PEP regulations immediately mm -hmm. for all British citizens. And secondly, you say, actually, there should be a legal right to have a bank account with um, one or two of the main clearing banks. NatWest is the obvious one because we the people own almost 40% of it. So you have that legal right for you and for as an individual and for a, uh, a business and that, that is absolutely crystal clear. Again, that could be pushed through in September, the moment they get back and you deal with this stuff. We used to have this legal right which was through the post office. Yeah. Many other countries in Europe yes. have that legal right. Unbelievably, of course, it's actually this Conservative uh, Party, as I understand, that got rid of that legal yeah. right. What we want is action. I don't want waffle from Sunak. I want action and I want because it now. What happened uh, with you and Metro Bank? So it's exactly two years ago that I got a letter from Metro Bank saying you've got 60 days to move your account. No and reason was that given. For the reform party that was for, for you that was for the reform party. Obviously asked for a reason. They didn't give it. They just said it was a commercial decision. I held a press conference on it at the time. We couldn't get accounts elsewhere. I actually wrote to the governor of the Bank of England and said, look, if we can't have a bank account elsewhere, democracy can't exist. What happened? Um, so the governor promised me, bless him, that he would give me a substantive reply to my suggestion that uh, they should have a sort of almost like a, a bank of last resort at the Bank of England for political yeah. parties. He said, I'd get a substantive reply. Two years later, mm. I'm still waiting. And did you lose your account with Metro? So we did lose our Metro, yes, absolutely. That did was someone else take you on? Uh, luckily, um, and here's a lesson for everybody, folks. If you're listening, watching, always have a plan B. In anything. You need a plan B. We had a plan B. I obviously didn't yeah, tell Nigel, anybody else. Nigel had tried nine banks. Absolutely there. right. As, you, Gina all... Miller had tried. Gina, Gina Miller uh, has been having troubles, and that's utterly appalling. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to have a plan B, but we need a legal right. Whether you're an individual, a small business, a think tank, mm -hmm. a political... You can't exist without this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I want action from this government. I don't want a review that's going to be yeah, kicked yeah. down the road for a year yeah. by civil servants so, that so, don't want So enough stuff. rhetoric, we, we need a plan. Like, like so many things, we need action yeah. and we need it now. 
Richard, just finally, where does this change things for your party politically? Because, of course, you used to be the Brexit party. Uh, arguably, without your party, without Farage, there would never have been a Brexit delivered. Correct, course, absolutely. The Brexit party that forced out Theresa May and, uh, and allowed Boris to... Without us, to Brexit, Brexit would never have happened. Now... This is obviously an issue that has captured the imagination of the British public, arguably the biggest victory against the establishment since Brexit. But are you planning to funnel it into a political cause? Is Nigel talking about coming well, back actually, to frontline th th politics? This is, let's be clear. This is, as Nigel quite rightly has said, this is actually non-political. Mm -hmm. This is on behalf of the people and of businesses... Yep. And, and entities so that, should want, unite that, left and that right. want... So it should unite all of us. It's a common cause that Nigel is brilliantly championing and long may that continue. But, look, we are always campaigning against the establishment that is still trying, basically, to, to, to ruin Brexit, to row back on whatever sort of, you know, pretty feeble Brexit that we have got. And so we've got to keep campaigning against them they're part of this global elite. So, so will that this be a want campaign issue for you at the next election, uh, Debanky? I think I think it'll be a campaign issue for everybody. I think actually there will be common purpose, and there are there's so many massive issues that we will be campaigning on. Obviously, the key one is stop the boats. We've got to take control of our lawful immigration. We want net. The only net zero this country should have hmm. is net zero immigration, are, are, and we should are, stop are you the sort boats. Of and hear, hear me out. Finally, yeah, yeah, of course. I've called. We've had peak net. Zero. Yeah. It started last weekend. We're now allowed to talk about it because yeah. uh, President Not Tony, zero, I call President, now, yeah, is. President Blair has said that uh, you know actually um, yeah, yeah. whatever we do would make no difference yeah. to climate change whatsoever. The truth is coming out. We've got to ram it home. We've got to win yeah. this battle, yeah. and we will be on it hard. Yeah. You're the leader of the party, right? Are you nudging Nigel to say, "Come on, you're going to run at the next election"? Do you want that? You know Nigel. No one nudges Nigel. <laughs> uh, Nigel, you know he he is he's got so many things that he's focusing yeah. on. This is a huge cause yeah. he's taken on. But like all of us, he's utterly steaming mad yeah. about the failure to deliver a proper Brexit, and we're all very focused on it. Let's do Brexit and do it properly. Richard Tice, leader of Reform UK. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Hang tight, by the way. One of the best journalists in the business, Tom Bauer, is going to give his unrivaled take on Harry and Meghan losing friends faster than commercial deals. First, though, the weather. That warm feeling inside. From Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hi there, it's Aidan McGiven here with the GB News forecast. Turning wet again overnight. Heavy showers replace the rain into Wednesday, but unseasonable winds, especially along southern coastal parts of England. An area of low pressure is developing over the Atlantic. That's going to move through central parts overnight. It's going to bring the strongest winds on the southern flank and some heavy rain ahead of it into Northern Ireland later this evening, passing through Wales, southern and central England, and then eventually northern and eastern England, seeing the wet weather by dawn, as well as southern Scotland. Now, northern Scotland stays clear overnight and here Temperatures will dip into the single figures, but elsewhere, those temperatures will stay at 13, 14, 15 Celsius. But it is a wet and windy start to Wednesday. The wettest weather will be across Northern Ireland, central and southern Scotland, northern England. Another band of rain moves through southern counties for a while, carried through on a strengthening wind with the risk of gales for coastal areas, 50, perhaps 60 mile per hour wind gusts. That could cause impacts if you're uh, taking part in outdoor activities, for example, or camping. And another thing that could be impactful, very heavy showers and thunderstorms through central parts. That all clears through, and by Thursday, it's a much brighter start to the day. Some sunshine out there. Quite quickly, though, the cloud fills in and further showers develop by the afternoon. Hit and miss downpours, and the wind from the north will make it feel on the cold side. Similar conditions on Friday before another low arrives on Saturday. That warm feeling inside. From Boxed Boilers. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Coming up in Uncancelled, Tom Bell was here to dissect why Harry and Meghan are quickly becoming one of the most unpopular couples in Hollywood. He's also got plenty to say on the Farage banking scandal latest Bauer and his bombshells shortly. Next in the media buzz, though, Costa Coffee customers are frothing at the drinks giant for displaying a trans man on the side of a van bearing double breast removal surgery scars. So is this Costa's Bud Light moment? My superstar panel debate this in an instant.
Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Jacob Rees-Mogg. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners on TV, radio and online. This is GB News. Now then, Lee Anderson here. Join me on GB News on my new show, The Real World, every Friday at 7pm, where real people get to meet those in power and hold them to account. Every week, we'll be hearing your views from up and down the country in the real world. Join me at 7 on GB News, Britain's news channel. Join me, Camilla Tomini, on Sunday mornings from 9.30, taking the politicians to task and breaking out of SW1 to see how their decisions are affecting you across the UK. Bursting the Westminster bubble every Sunday morning, only on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's watching. Join us every night on GB News at 11pm for Headliners, which is three top comedians going through the next day's news stories, which is exactly what you need, because when the establishment has gone crazy, you need some craziness to make sense of it. So join us 11pm every night on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Andrew Doyle. Join me at 7 o'clock every Sunday night for Free Speech Nation, the show where I tackle the week's biggest stories in politics and current affairs with the help of my two comedian panellists and a variety of special guests. Free Speech Nation, Sunday nights from 7 on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I joined GB News because I was sick and tired of not hearing my views being represented, not just mine, but so many people that I knew and spoke to. Oh, I just couldn't get my voice out there. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't do anything. Whatever the narrative was, I kind of had to follow it. GB News is there to provide a voice for those who have been ignored by the establishment media. We think different things. We've got a different style. GB News is here to be optimistic and positive about the future. It's real kind of dynamic and flowing with the audience very much at the heart of it like a big family. Here at GB News, we talk about the things that matter to you. Hearing the voices from right across our towns and cities, especially our towns. All sides of the argument represented with a heavy dose of opinion. We're on a mission here to make a difference. And the GB News family really is here for you and whatever time of day you can watch or listen. Britain's watching. Britain's watching. We're proud to be GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Let's return to tomorrow's news site now in our Media Buzz. More front pages are in. And the Daily Mail exclusively reveals Just Stop Oil activists are boasting their tactics have shaped Labour Party policy. They were secretly recorded at a meeting claiming a stunt outside Parliament had influenced the opposition's stance, suddenly shifting to vetoing new North Sea oil and gas projects after JSO blocked London roads for weeks. The Daily Telegraph leads with the report that first-time criminals such as thieves and drug users will avoid court and instead be handed cautions as the court backlog continues to worsen. Cops will be given and a list of crimes that will be overlooked. My superstar panel, return now. GB News Queen, Nana Queer, the conservative commentator, the Reverend Calvin Robinson, and the best-selling author, Rebecca Reed. Now, the lessons of woke brands Bud Light, Nike and Jack Daniels have clearly not been learned by the coffee chain Costa, which is facing a furious backlash and potential consumer boycott after a cartoon of a trans man with double mastectomy scars was spotted on one of their Costa Express vans. Co-founder of the campaign group Thoughtful Children, James Essex, originally highlighted the cartoon, asking why Costa was glorifying irreversible surgery performed on healthy breasts of women for a mental health condition. While campaigner and Sex Matters board member Maya Forstatter slammed the artwork as shocking and irresponsible. Thousands have now joined calls for a cost of boycott. Many of you have been emailing me about this. And it could really worry the parent company Coca-Cola after a similar fallout knocked $27 billion off Bud Light's producer's market value earlier this year. So, Nana Aquir, mm. how do you feel about this ad? Well, I think it's going to cost them a fortune, frankly. <laughs> it's going to cost a fortune for them because this, I think, is 
absolutely abhorrent. Why would you glorify something that a lot of people who do this then regret? There are no end of people on Twitter. I, I actually befriended this one person who has got a big thing ca campaign going up about the fact that she mutilated her body. She had the uh, breast removed. She was very young, 16, 17. And now she can never, ever breastfeed. Obviously, many years later, she's now thinking, why have I done this? For them to get on the back of that, I think is somewhat sinister. And uh, having seen this and the way this is sort of going so fast, I've decided that I'm no longer going to be doing the pronouns. So mm. I will call somebody by their name. If a man wants to be called Rachel, I will call them Rachel, but I will not call him a she or a her. Really? Because I think that that is the open So, so, so preferred pronouns now, you say no. I'm not. So that's it's really pronouns. interesting myself, because Megan, Megan Kelly myself. made the same decision recently. I'm not doing that. No, after seeing this, I've realised now it's leading to mutilation mm -hmm. of young children and people who do not understand where they are, their own minds, mm -hmm. their own puberty. And when brands like this think that they're being clever by including everybody, even those who I would say are suffering from an illness, I think it's disgusting. So, so, so Dylan Mulvaney or Leah Thomas, you yeah. would call if it. If you were at a dinner and there was somebody across the table from you and you weren't sure whether they were trans or not, like they seemed fairly masculine, but that could be the way, mm. would you you would start using he just no, in case? No, I call them by their name, Rebecca. Just so you would avoid you just avoid pronouns. I call them by their name, and then until if it is clear that they are a man mm. and they expect me to call them a her or a she, I will call them a he, but I will call but them. Generally violent. speaking, if you're speaking to someone, that. you won't be saying what, he or she anyway, would you? Should I lie to myself because they are lying to them? So, for example, Nana, on your show now, yeah. if you're referring to say Dylan Mulvaney he, I've always or Leah Thomas, well, you, Dylan you does would go say. by they anyway, so that's. A oh, kind well, of I won't be doing they because there's only one of him. Okay, Rebecca Reed, what do you think about the Costa ad? It's not an ad. It's uh, to start with. It's the a, billboard, it's a, whatever it it's is. A, it's a the small, promo. It is a small picture on a coffee cart. Yeah, what do you think of it? An event from. Okay, a forget year what ago. it is. What do you think of it? I think that it is a, a small number of cross people getting cross about something that doesn't really matter. And I think that reflecting that something exists does not necessarily mean glorifying it. I feel the same way about it that I would if they had portrayed somebody who had self harm scars. I don't think that self harm is a good thing, but I don't think that pretending that people don't do these things is a good thing either. I think that this is also it's it's a cartoon, so you can pick whatever story you want. Well, this could be somebody who had a mistake. To me for health Calvin, this is That's what Costa Coffee says. So Calvin, cartoon. can I just tell you what Costa Coffee yes, says, please, then you please. can respond. Yeah. So, so Costa says, at Costa Coffee, we celebrate the diversity of our customers, team members and partners. We want everyone that interacts with us to experience the inclusive environment that we create to encourage people to feel welcome, feel free and unashamedly proud to be themselves. Surely they should just want people to buy coffee. <laughs> Exactly. That's the whole but purpose of But it was a pride event, that's why they did it. Yeah, but that's not uh, really... I think, I think the... you've been very disingenuous tonight, saying it's about... It's, we don't want to pretend these people don't exist. It's not about pretending anyone doesn't exist. You don't have to highlight any situation like self-harming or mutilation. Uh, I, would, I would say it is glorifying, but you don't have to highlight it at all. So in, they had in something this, in a wheelchair, would you say that was a problem? You don't have to highlight it at all. That's, all not this the same thing, that's very different. Being, being born with an illness and actually mutilating your body but is you very different. do not believe that trans, being but, trans is a mental illness? Of course it's a mental illness. OK, final word on this, Calvin. But this is physical mutilation. I mean, go all the way back to... We wouldn't say it's appropriate for a woman to be topless on, on a promo like this anyway, but because she's physically mutilated her body, we suddenly okay. say it's OK. OK, stand by, Calvin, because we've got uh, this breaking tonight. And Donald Trump has been indicted by a grand jury examining the January 6 riots and alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. The US media has tonight reported that the former US president has been charged with conspiracy to fraud US, witness tampering and conspiracy against the right of citizens. The former US president posted on his own social media platform Truth to voice his anger at the third indictment against him, this time from special counsel Jack Smith. Trump wrote, I hear that deranged Jack Smith, in order to interfere with the presidential election of 2024, will be putting out yet another fake indictment of your favourite president, me, at 5pm. Why didn't they do this two and a half years ago? Now, Calvin Robinson, this sets up the fascinating, surreal and very troubling prospect that you are going to have the Republican nomination for president running against Joe Biden from behind bars because this indictment actually could happen quite quickly and the potential consequence, because Megyn Kelly was talking about this earlier tonight, given it will be tried in D.C., mm -hmm. 
is jail. This is yeah. madness, isn't it, Carl? You know what, I've learned a lesson tonight. I've got to stop using the word conspiracy theory. Because a couple of years ago, people were saying, there won't be another election, Calvin. Democracy is dead. I'm like, come on, that's a bit out there. Well, no even, even for me, that's a stretch. But now, they are going after their opposition. This is the actions of a tyrannous yeah. dictator, of trying to put your opposition into jail so that you, they can't win an election. That's exactly what they're doing to Donald Trump. It's outrageous to see it happening in a Western democracy, mm -hmm. the so-called free world. Do you not think he's more likely to win if people feel that he's... Yes, if, if, yes. If absolutely, the because this is a stitch-up, Nana. People don't like stitch-ups, even if they think they're doing the right thing and they think they're going to set him aside to one side. This is the country that have Joe Biden leading them, and we can all see that Joe mm. Biden is not well. And he is going to yep. apparently run again. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I think so, everyone's so doing a bad job. There, State, really. Statement just in from the Trump campaign, which says this is nothing more than the latest corrupt chapter in the continued pathetic attempt by the Biden crime family and their weaponized yeah. Department of Justice to interfere with the 2024 presidential election, in which President Trump is the undisputed frontrunner and leading by substantial margins, Nana. Yeah, well, I mean, we can all see it now, but I think a lot of people who hated Trump are looking at this and not mm. liking it. I think Trump is actually garnishing more support from mm. people who would have voted yeah. for the Democrats. Yeah. Well, I Calvin hate Robinson. Trump and I would, I would delightedly push him down the flight of stairs, but I don't feel great about this. Well, Governor Robinson, love it. one thing I can say is that he's been summoned, by the way, to appear in federal court in Washington, D.C., on August the 3rd at 4 p.m. Eastern time, which I believe is 9 p.m. Uh, British Standard Time. One thing I can say, Calvin, is this without any doubt. I mean, forget the debates that are coming up. Just put them to one side. Yeah. Trump has secured the Republican presidential nomination tonight. DeSantis can forget it. The Republicans are going to rally behind Trump as a result do. of this. Do, yeah. uh, but the question is, how does the country feel about this? Well, the American country... Mm. Well, I think they're going to be united, actually, in, in disgust at the establishment and how the establishment is this so... This one step too far. He one always step. said it's not him they're going for, it's them that he's after, okay. they're after. I think a lot of them so, are wary of it. There we go. Oh. The breaking news tonight. Trump indicted for January the 6th. He is due to appear in federal court in Washington, D.C. on August the 3rd. So that is... Next week. Thursday. Yeah. Wow. This week. This week. This week. Thursday at 9 p.m. <laughs> we'll bring you all of that action live, of course, here on GB News. But look, do stand by Rebecca Calvin Nana because coming up, the Ramonas are after Brexit revenge amid Nigel Farage's banking scandal. Find out why Brexiteers have been nominated for a gong when I crown my greatest Britain in uni in Jackass shortly. But next, in uncancelled journalist juggernaut Tom Bauer investigates why Harry and Meghan are quickly losing friends and influence in Hollywood, and it's got something to do with their loose lips. He'll also have all the latest on that breaking Trump news. Bauer up in just two minutes time. Don't go anywhere. What you get for breakfast is something that if we do our jobs right, you will wake up to news that you didn't know the night before. It's a conversation. It's not just me and Eamon. We want to get to know you and we want you to get to know us. From six, it's breakfast with Eamon and Isabel. Monday to Thursdays on GB News. Britain's news channel. When the news happens, it happens here. And really important breaking news. Breaking news this morning. On TV, radio and online, the news starts here on Britain's Newsroom. All the biggest stories and the answers that you need from across the UK and beyond. Join Britain's Newsroom from 9.30 on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Patrick Christie's Monday to Friday, 3 till 6. We tackle the day's news agenda like you've never seen before. It's high tempo, high octane, the most controversial topics and the best guests. You will not be able to take your eyes and ears off it. I'm not afraid to ask the questions that you really want answered. 3 till 6 p.m. Monday to Friday on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Westminster is going around in ever-decreasing circles, followed by the media. Britain is broken. How on earth did we get into this mess? But more importantly, how do we get out of it? Join me at 7pm, Monday to Thursdays, on Farage, here on GB News. We will have open, rational debate. We've got to work out how Britain moves forward from this. Join us here on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain is watching.
People in Britain, they love free speech, but they also love fair play. I don't care if I'm speaking somebody from a trade union, from the Labour Party, somebody from the SNP. And I think the viewers like to see that actually we can challenge one another, but in a positive way. We think we ask the questions that people want to ask, and, and often we ask the questions that we wanted to ask in Parliament but never got the chance to ask. So join us every Saturday, 10 a.m. till noon on GB News, Britain's news channel. Time now, Frank Ansold. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. And Harry and Meghan's American dream is becoming lonelier, with David and Victoria Beckham, the latest A-listers to leave the runaway royals behind. The Mail on Sunday this weekend revealed that the Beckhams had distanced themselves from the Montecito Monas after being accused of leaking stories to the press by the pair, leaving David furious, which is perhaps why Harry and Meghan were nowhere to be seen, as Beck's unveiled his brand new Into Miami signing, Lionel Messi, alongside a host of Hollywood pals. Friend of the show, Celia Walden, believes that the Sussexes may be frozen out after breaking the Hollywood code. Writing, asked why Harry and Meghan were being left off so many guest lists last year, one LA source told The Spectator that it was partly down to their capacity to share. Well, I'm delighted to be welcomed. I'm delighted to welcome now the esteemed royal biographer, Tom Bauer. Tom, what do you make of this fallout between Victoria and David Beckham and Harry and Meghan, who were once very close? Well, of course, um, I'm doing the Beckham story at the moment, and I know quite a bit about it. I think you've got to remember the day of uh, Meghan's wedding, Posh arrived in Windsor looking very, very angry. And she was angry because not only had they not been invited to the dinner following the wedding ceremony, but she felt very annoyed that they, the Beckhams had given Meghan and Harry lots of help before the wedding, and they had not been properly thanked. Now, move forward to uh, when the World Cup was on, and David Beckham flew all the way from Qatar to Boston to kiss uh, Prince, Princess of Wales, now uh, then the Duchess of Cambridge, on her cheek during the launch of her Earth uh, program uh, and prize. And that slighted terribly the Sussexes, who were in New York at that moment, trying to build up their profile. Now, what happened in between that uh, wedding in, in, 19, in 2018 and the Qatar uh, to Boston trip was this, that the Beckhams felt very angry about the, the, not only the lack of gratitude by Meghan and Harry towards them, but that they'd been ostracized on a couple of key occasions. And that got even worse when uh, Victoria Beckham tried very hard to make up with Meghan by lending her and giving her various clothes to wear. She wore one, for example, at the 2019 Christmas uh, appearance outside Sandringham. She wore a Victoria Beckham dress. Meghan didn't like it that she was asked to pay for it, that she couldn't take a free gift. Worse, of course, was when it was leaked that Victoria was helping Meghan not only with her clothes, but also with her makeup. And there had been various confrontations between the two families. Harry tried to placate David Beckham, but Victoria was having none of it. And worst of all, Meghan said that he, she wasn't going to talk to them at all. So there's been this simmering row between them. But of course, now, with the Beckhams in ascendancy in Miami, having secured Lionel Messi, the great footballer for the Miami team, and uh, not inviting the Sussexes to their great party, is all coming to the boil. The clash between the Duchess and Victoria, who'd love to be a lady, but the, the knighthood eludes, David. So it's going to be a real good clash between the two in America, because that's where the battle is now going to take place. Wow, lots of Bauer bombshells there tonight. But, Tom, we must move on to this breaking news.
And breaking tonight, Donald Trump has been indicted by a grand jury examining the January 6 riots and alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Uh, it has just been released what the four charges are, Tom. Conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of and attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, and conspiracy against rights. Now, Tom Bauer, this leads us to the completely ridiculous situation where the former US president could actually run with the Republican nomination from behind bars. He's compared the situation to Nazi Germany and the former Soviet Union tonight, adding these un-American witch hunts will fail and President Trump will be re-elected to the White House so he can save our country from the abuse, incompetence and corruption that is running through the veins of our country at levels never seen before. Uh, Tom, what do you make of it? Well, I think Donald Trump behaved terribly in that January uh, uh, days when he lost the election and uh, denied that the election was valid. I also think that the Democrats clearly have an agenda against Donald Trump. But I, you think that he's going to be victorious in the election. I don't. I think that the Republicans, of course, will rally behind Trump. But the majority of voters will rally behind Biden because the Democrats clearly won't switch to Trump and the, the don't knows will be very wary of voting for Trump. So I do think it's in the balance. I do think that the Democrats undoubtedly are uh, homing in and hoping to get advantage from Trump's ridiculous and often perhaps criminal behavior. But I don't think he's got it in the bag, the election uh, uh, for the presidency. The, the tragedy for America is that these two old men, both discredited, are the only candidates for the presidency. Uh, even if a third candidate ran, it would be very difficult. Uh, it never happened before that they could actually win. So America is really in a rock, between a rock and a hard place. Uh, in the end, Donald Trump, whatever you think of his politics, is pretty discredited. Uh, he doesn't stand out as a man of great honesty and decency. And on the other hand, he's against a president who is uh, not very well, to say the least. Indeed, that's so for sure. Tom Bauer, it's going to be a fascinating week. Thank you for bringing us that breaking news, Tom. We will speak very soon. But it's time now to reveal tonight's greatest Britain and union jackass. Nana Ekwe, who's your nominee for GB? Well, it's got to be the Daily Mail and their fantastic expose of those lawyers who were trying to fudge the system and getting people into this country who were actually... Yeah, so illegal. important. So Great brilliant. journalism. Calvin Robinson, your nominee. Every single Brexit voter for sticking one up to the establishment Remainers, who we see now are trying to take revenge on people like Farage by debanking us. And Rebecca Reid, your nominee. Uh, is Rishi Sunak, weirdly, uh, because um, I really like that he's taking a stand against LTNs, as I explained earlier. I'm vehemently against them, and I think it's just a good example of somebody realising something doesn't work and fixing it. Well, look, uh, I've got to go with Rebecca Cameron not I voting always Tory. back Brexit voters. You change the country for the better. Nana Akwe, your union jackass nominee. It's got to be a cost of coffee for their terrible, terrible demonstration of wokeness with mutilation of breasts. I mean, this was an awful thing. And, uh, yeah, it's going to cost them a fortune, I think. Yeah, big boycott coming, I think. Calvin Robinson, your nominee, please. For you the key that. for pushing this critical race theory nonsense of white privilege into primary schools, it's abhorrent and should not be allowed. Yes, and I spoke about that, of course, in my digest at the top of the show tonight, uh, where we had quite a, quite a heated debate, which I recommend you check out on YouTube if you missed it. Uh, and Rebecca Reed. Your union, Jackass. Mine is Captain, the late Captain Tom Moore's family for defending the spa that they built in the garden, I think, without the correct planning permissions. I mean, look, we've got to respect the hustle, but these people really have not covered themselves in glory. And, uh, yeah, I think it's probably a good thing he's not around to see how they've behaved. Well, look, I, I think, personally, we've got to wait to hear both sides of that story. I really do, because I feel like uh, the witch hunt going on against uh, Captain Tom Moore's family. I'm, I'm not comfortable with it myself at this point. Uh, but look, 
There's my Union Jack has double win for Calvin Robinson hey. tonight. Of course, it's the key. <laughs> that never happens. Uh, with, with their, no, that no, always happens. happened before <laughs> with their critical race theory nonsense. Uh, Calvin Robinson, Nana Aquaire, Rebecca Reed, my fabulous superstar panel. Thank you so much. Thank you for your company tonight. Big breaking news tonight. I'm back again tomorrow from 9 p.m. with Lee Anderson, Angela Levin, and Jim Davidson. Wow, what a show. Next up, though, it's the brilliant team at Headliners. Good night. The temperature's rising. Boxed Solar. Proud sponsors of weather on GB News. Hi there, it's Aidan McGibbon here with the GB News forecast. Turning wet again overnight. Heavy showers replace the rain into Wednesday, but unseasonable winds, especially along southern coastal parts of England. An area of low pressure is developing over the Atlantic. That's going to move through central parts overnight. It's going to bring the strongest winds on the southern flank and some heavy rain ahead of it into Northern Ireland later this evening, passing through Wales, southern and central England, and then a